Greetings. Welcome to In Conversation with Trevor, brought to you by Heart and Soul Broadcasting Services. I go beyond the headlines and beyond the sensational. Today I'm in conversation with Sir Nige, Nigel Mugamu, the founder and chief executive officer of 263 Chat. If you like this conversation, remember to subscribe, like, and share. Say Nige, Nigel Mugamo. So delighted to have you on the show, my brother. Thank you very much, Mukum. Thank you. Mm. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to start you um, a very soft spot. Mm. Your your daughter Gabby. Yes. You say um, her birth. Yes. Get, was the most life changing moment in your life. She's eight years old now. How old is she? Uh, nine on Friday. Nine on Friday. Yes. Why do you say? Hey, the, 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 the head birth was the most life-changing moment in your life? Uh, many reasons. Uh, family is very important to me. Um, so um, there are only two of us in the family, my sister and I, I'm the oldest sibling. Um, you know, so a small family. Mm. And then she was born. Uh, we changed everything, you know, uh, changed the way I drive. So certain roads, you're like, I, I don't need to cross it. That road, in that way. Because I've got somebody I've, that I'm I've, responsible I've, 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 for. I've got someone I'm responsible for, you know. Um, very sweet, smart, uh, you know, uh, young girl. Um, I'm, Dad, I'm a big girl now. I'm a big girl. <laughs> she got a pen license yesterday, actually. Yeah. Um, so that's a big, big deal. Um, but what it did, you know, at a practical level, you know, um, I didn't know love. You know, until wow. uh, until I met this little person, I was there, and you know, when she was born, I cut the umbilical cord. Um, you were you witnessed the birth. I was there. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I think it's very important to be there um, in those moments if you can. You know, it's it's, it's a it's pr it's a privilege to mm. be there. But if you mm. can mm. be there, um, she knows that I was there. Um, you know, she's got tons of photos. She had uh, colic. I used to put on my back um, and put it to sleep and help, you know, put it to sleep. Um, so we've got a very strong bond. Um, I don't even have to discipline her by, I don't know, I just, you know, we don't do that. Mm. She, she knows dad doesn't mm. like this or mm. dad likes that, you know. Mm. Um, yeah. And, and, and over time, you, you then realize, you know, what are we doing this for, really? You know, we are custodians really you know we're here for a minute uh, amount of time and then we hand over whatever we've done to this next generation um, i'm in my mid 40s now I, i'm in the second half as i like to say and uh it's not it's not about me it's about the next generation so what are we going to do mm. yeah and so she's uh the north star as it were yeah. and what are we going to do we have to leave this world better than how we found it. And we, uh, you know, you are in your uh, lane, I'm in my lane. And collectively, somehow, we've got to, you know, forge forward and, and, and make the difference so that we hand over um, this thing, uh, this, 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 you know, whatever it is we're handing over to them, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, better than what, how we found it. When, when, when she was two, I set up an email address, you know, for her. So I email her now, you know, and I get the rest of the family to do the same thing. And I'm a storyteller. Yeah. You know, the chief storyteller, right? And the idea is you set up an email address, so you tell her things. And it was really inspired by my mom. You know, when she was born, my mother started telling me things about me and saying, oh, you know, the face that she's making, you used to do that. The stories I hadn't heard. So I started saying, well, hang on, they're going, they're gaps, they're going to be missing gaps here. Why don't I try and fill in those gaps? I love this idea. You know, by emailing her. And some days it's, you know, here's a school run. We're together in the car. Um, She's obviously not opening these emails because no, she not doesn't, yet. No, not yet. She doesn't know. She doesn't know. Mm. She doesn't know. 
she um so i think when she's 18 or something i haven't decided yet um give her that email address oh so, that you're pulling my heart strings right there <laughs> so do you write every day do you like it's like journaling isn't it it, it is it is actually it is. to your daughter yeah, yes so thing whenever things happen you know so and so this is what happened um that's beautiful thank you thank you um i sent her voice notes now so i worked out how to do it um um, you know, I've got her email password mm. in an envelope in case I get run over by a bus tomorrow. People know where to find it, mm. uh, that sort of thing. And, and you know, we also do it. I also do it because, um, you know, there's a story of her life. That's important. Yeah. You know, um, she must always know that she, she matters. And also when we are living our life now as adults, we must always remember, and I think this is where sometimes a political leadership um, they don't often think like this. We're answerable. Mm. We're answerable. All Dad, of us. Yes. Dad, why in this year, why why didn't we do it this way? We must know we must be prepared to have that very difficult conversation. Mm. So journaling, emailing her is part of making it easier, in mm. my view. Yeah. 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 I, I, you, you've Forced me to ask you this question. Mm. I, I saw a guy on Twitter mm. last week, mm. very excited mm. um, that they'd had, um, uh, they'd given birth, mm. you know, mm. couple to this child. Mm. And the child was there on Twitter mm -hmm. uh, with a picture and all. Mm. First day of their life, they're on Twitter. Mm. This child is not given permission for this picture to be out there. This child is going to grow up one day and someone said, Do, are you aware that mm. this, what, what's your, what's your, I mean, a good friend of mine, uh, Stafford Massey, mm. who was at our Ideas Festival, mm. raised this issue and says, you have, these, this is a generation that is born on Twitter. Mm. Some of them is live on YouTube. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. But they haven't given permission to this. Yeah. They are rebelling against mm. that now. Mm. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, Gabby, you, have, you didn't do that with Gabby. No, I didn't. No. I didn't. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I tend to, I tend to think, you know, let her decide. Yeah. You know, um, and also I don't want her to be, um, to you know, she's going to grow up and and go into the into the real world. I don't want her to. Oh, you're Sir Niger's daughter. You know. She has a name, she has an identity. I have a younger sister. I know that my sister doesn't like being referred to as Nigel's little sister. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Yeah. She's, she's Angie, she's got her own personality, yeah. she's her own person, um, and you must know her as that. And you know, whether I like John, it doesn't necessarily mean- Angie, Angie has got, like, John. like John. Yes. Or if not she, John. Yeah. yeah. She has to, if, if she gets along with John, great. Mm. If she doesn't, that's great. Mm. Same thing for Gabby. Mm. Same thing for her. Nigel, there's so many things I want to talk to you about mm. um, because they mean something to somebody out there because there are lessons um, out uh, there for somebody that are hooks from your life. Mm. The first one, the fascinating one for me is you are a trained chartered account, accountant, mm. rather, financial manager. Mm. But you followed a passion, which is different from your training. You are a storyteller. You've yeah. become a journalist. Mm. Talk about how. Let's talk to us about how you found that mm -hmm. as you're doing your financial training. So I have to go back a little bit. Um, please do. Yeah, please do. That's why to, we're here. Yeah, we've got to go back. A little yeah. Bit. So my parents, um, like most people in that generation, came from the village from Kumusha. And they, you know, built a life for themselves, you know, worked really hard. And so one of the things that they instilled in Angie and I, just got to work hard, mm. right? Um, growing up, mom and dad set up a, a small accounting practice, right? And back then, um, you know, you, you didn't have these personal computers. So you, if you needed someone to, if you needed to leave your CV, you needed someone to type it up. So this company offered those services. So I think I was about grade seven, form one, somewhere there. And I started going to work. Mm. So dad just said, no, no, you must go to work. Spend half the holiday going to work and then half the holiday just playing, you know, um, and being a normal kid. So I grew up 
going to work. Mm. So what it did was it, my work ethic came from that. Mm. Uh, I think, uh, I you know, those around me will tell you I'm, I'm a workaholic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've got a, I'm going in, in a particular direction. This is what we're trying to build. And then uh, this is what we're going to leave the next generation, right? And, you know, obviously family, that family value. Yeah. yeah. What are we, what are we as the Mgamu's going to leave the next generation of the Mgamu family? Mm -hmm. That's very, very important sure. to me. Very, very important to me. So, um, you know, this work ethic, um, you know, uh, working hard, all the lessons uh, really kind of brought me to where I am now. Uh, both my parents are accountants. So it was literally, you will study accounting, <laughs> you know? Um, and for, I think for the first year and a half of my degree, uh, in Australia, I went along with it because I was like, oh, this is what they want. And I didn't really apply myself. That's interesting. You see, uh, you, see, I'm, you know, early, uh, early 20s, you know, 18, 19, 20, I'm trying to figure out who I am. Um, and then I realized, you know, okay, I'm good at this accounting thing. And so I did it. And because I'm close to, because we're, clo we're a close family, um, when I got a job offer, hey, mom, dad, I've got this job offer. This company is like this. What do you think? And I consult, you know. Um, and we would talk about it and, you know, oh, pros, cons. And I involve them in my, in, 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 um, in my life. Uh, I always like to use football as an analogy. Um, Manchester United Manchester, supporter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, oh, I, I let's am. not go yeah, there right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, yeah, but yeah, use yeah, <laughs> Die hard. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, but we'll, Arsenal, we'll, yeah, yeah, please. Course, yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll get there. But I think that as as children, we're, we're playing a football game, right? And sometimes we need our parents to be playing with us. Mm. You know, maybe they're the midfield, right? And we're the striker or the defender, whatever it is, whatever position we are. And then as we grow older, they, they, they now, they end up being in the stand. They're still in the stadium. They're still watching you play. Right, and sometimes they're on the bench, and sometimes they come in and, and, and you know, and uh, and help you. And so, along the way, I realized I've always been, I've always had a journal. Hmm. I came in here, I've got a notebook. I've got, I've, I've got a pen, I've got a pen right here, and I always write. Even though with all this technology, I, I believe in writing. We must document, mm. right? Um, I, and I'm, I'm, I love history, right? So. Along the way, you know, history, the, the um, passion for writing. Um, my dad bought me a book, um, which I'll show you later. That book inspired two cities. Let's, let's go to the book. Yeah. Let's go to the book. Let's That's book. the, yeah. yeah. What's that book? This is Martin Luther King. I think I was, I was, I was in primary school. By he, John Dabby. Yes. Yeah. And he bought me this book. And this book, I couldn't understand the words. I, you know, I had to go, Dad, what does this word mean? Mom, what does this word mean? And this book inspired this whole justice, you know. Uh, but what happened? Why did they have to fight? I, I learned about slavery. I learned a whole bunch of things at that time. I, I, I guess I was, um, I, yeah, I learned a lot. And so it's no wonder, when I look back at my life, it's no wonder you go from accounting to, to journalism. That's, that's where I was going to go, mm. right? Um, I walked into this space. I'm really looking. Ah, you know, I go. Yeah, 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 you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. That's the journalist. Curious. Thing. I'm curious. Curious mind. Yes. Curious uh, mind. I go to. Uh, but when did when did the pull become so strong to drag you away from accounting? I was sitting in Edinburgh. I'd gone out there to do my MBA and I'd finished it. And I was now uh, I lived in Edinburgh for five years. And then twenty. It was actually Angie who said to me, "Oh, Facebook." Your sister. My mm -hmm. sister. Um, you know, go onto Facebook, go and see David so-and-so's pictures from, you know, wherever they're living. And I wasn't in, I was, I wasn't, not on I, Facebook. I was not on Facebook. So I, I actually rejected this whole social media thing. I was like, no, 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 this doesn't make sense. Why are you putting your personal information out there? <laughs> right? I was that guy. <laughs> then I joined and then I joined Twitter. Right. And then I was talking to Zimbabweans on the ground. And I'm in the, in the UK in the same sort of time zone. And we're talking about, ah, so what's the rate today? What's going on? You know, is there petrol? What's going on? And that, is the that was the transition, you know? And I remember very well, 
um, my first encounter with you mm. was actually on Twitter. Yes, it was. And I was attracted to your brain, to the way you tweeted and, and, and that kind of stuff. And then I started, I started following, it, mm. following you. Mm. And your quality of engagement oh, thank uh, you. attracted me to, mm. to start following you. So I didn't realize that that was actually you getting into journalism. I as a nudge. I, I you know at the time you didn't realize I didn't realize it. Happening. Yes. I just liked talking to See my parents always raised us to talk to people. Mm. If someone makes you walk down the street someone makes eye contact say hi you have to say hi. Mm. Otherwise now you're being rude. Mm. You see? And you 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 lose nothing by saying hi. Mm. You know, uh, we go to the bank um I'm with Gabby we're going to the bank. Um, and, uh, you know, get there, the security guard. I was, I'm a boss, Makadi. Right? So Gabby's like, Dad, is he your friend? My afraid? daughter doesn't like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maya doesn't like that. <laughs> she doesn't because like that. You talk a lot, Dad. You talk yeah, to everybody. This is exactly the thing. That, in fact, that's where Gabby's heading. You yeah. Know? I know, is he your friend? Because obviously, stranger danger. Ah, uh, he's not my friend, but he's, I'm just saying hi, I'm being polite. So in that politeness, and that, that's when you discover things. You that's where you discover people. That's where you discover people. Where, where, where do you live? I live where? How long does it take you to get home? Mm. See, that's the journalism, mm. you see? Mm. And I, I was always like, my father's like that. Mm. My mother's like that. So t take me to, I'm going to take you back now. Mm. Uh, where were you born? I was born in Habron, Botswana. Ha. Huh. It gets even more interesting. Yeah. So my parents um, met when they were teenagers, 15, 16. Mm-hmm. And uh, my Sekuru, um, dad's, yeah, dad's uh, cousin, uh, introduced them, the, the two of them. And so mom and dad got a scholarship to study accounting in Fiji. So I think the terms of the thing, of the, um, sp uh, the you know, the scholarship, said you have to be out of Zim, I think. So they, clearly something happened, mom got pregnant. And I was born in Botswana, and the three of us went to Fiji. Hmm. Yes. So the first four years of my life, I was... You were in Fiji? I was in Fiji, yeah. Then we came back, and then my sister was born here. Hmm. Yeah. And which schools did you start going to? Which primary school? And So I went to Highlands. Mm -hmm. um, uh, obviously in Highlands there. Uh, I went to Peter House mm -hmm. for Form 1 to Form 4. And I went to St. George's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then university you went to uh, to Australia to Australia uh, yeah, university called uh, New England to yeah. to study accounting to study accounting financial accounting yeah and then you did an MBA then I did an MBA what what was that MBA in so I focused on strategy yeah yeah okay um, once again it was my dad who said to me do it before you have a family yeah so I got it done before I was thirty um, and. Um, but I was doing it because I knew that eventually I was going to end up in business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I studied in Australia. I worked for four years for a small practice in Sydney. Um, and then uh, I uh, came home for what I thought would be a year. And then my, my now friends at the U.S. Embassy denied me twice. So I couldn't go to the U.S. because that's where I actually uh, intended to do my MBA. Then I had to make a plan B. Um, and I ended up in Edinburgh. Mm. Um, you know, so yeah, you know, stayed there for five years and then because of Twitter and everything that was going on, I was like, no, I want to go home. I had a really good job. I was, you know, yeah, I had a really good job. I was working for this company. Um, company could have taken me and it was a US based company. Um, Which company is that? Are you at liberty to share? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A company called Iron Mountain, mm -hmm. the largest, uh, data storage company in the world, uh, listed what, what, what. Presence all over the world except for Africa. Why did you want to come back home? Because that's another lesson for people out there. Uh, so, I get a lot of people asking me, "Why is should I come back home?" No, people asking, "Should I come back home?" Uh, and people saying, "Should I should I go away?" Why did you come back home? And and now that you are here, mm. with all that's happened, mm. do you ever ever have a moment where you regret having come back home? I don't regret. Um, so I came home because I've got something to come home to, right? Not everyone has got that. Okay. So I understand that privilege. My parents are in business um, and I, I, I came home to join the family business. Mm -hmm. um, I, I worked in the family business for, for four years uh, until 263 Chat became a business um, uh, in its own right. Are you at liberty to share the family business? 
Uh, retail. So retail. We're, yeah, so on okay. the retail side, yeah. So mm. I run a, a bookshop. Okay. Um, um, yeah, so I run a bookshop, uh, a bottle shop, and uh, soon to be traditional takeaway. We'll, we'll talk, yeah, we'll about, talk about, about that later. Yeah. 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 So the, you come back because yeah. you have something to come back I've to. I've got come, something to come back to. So the pool in the diaspora for you to stay mm. was 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 weaker than you wanting to come back home. Yes. Yes. You, you know. Um, you know, we to me it didn't make sense to sit in Edinburgh and complain about Zimbabwe, right? And say, oh, Zimbabwe this and Zimbabwe that, when I could be on the ground doing something, mm. you know? Um, it, it just didn't make sense to me. But also I just wanted to be home. I'm at peace. You know, I don't have anyone asking me for my documents. You know, I don't have anyone asking. I don't, I don't, I'm not a stranger. You know, I'm, I'm, I think I know I'm where I'm meant to be. Government I'm going to stop you yeah. there. Yeah. Um, you are home. You don't have to explain to yourself, to, to anybody who you are. Yeah. I want us to take a, a quick uh, break. Please don't go away. Uh, join me and Sanaj uh, for uh, the next segment. Well, I look at, it, it was a lonely journey. Um, you know, I always speak about we, but at the time it was just me, mm. you know, uh, and we didn't have this fiber internet that we have now and all this sort of stuff. Um, I was scared of, ah, you know, if you raise your voice, you know, the CIO are going to come, come, find, for you. come for you and they're find you and they're going to kill you. Mm. You know, I was scared because I didn't know, like, is it really true? Welcome back. I'm chatting to Sir Nigel, Nigel Mugamu. So Nigel, you decided to come back. And my question um, is, now that you are here, mm. with all the mess that we are in, mm. and looking back at Ed Edinburgh, mm. um, yeah. any moments of regret? Um, no, you know, in, in a way, I wish I'd come back sooner. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I wish I'd, uh, you know, yeah, I wish I'd come back sooner. But, you know, I also look back and I'm a pretty philosophical person. I think, well, hang on, you know, there's many lessons to be learned. You know, even if you take the detour, there's a lesson. Oh, okay, now I understand why I need mm. to take the detour. Mm. Um, and hindsight is, is 2020. So I've got the education and the experience to be able to go and live there if I wanted to, right? Um, the issue is I just, don't believe is the best thing for me right now. Yeah. Right. Um, in all this chaos, mind you, you know, there are business opportunities. Mm. So, I mean, you look at, you know, Afghanistan or Iraq, you know, there's someone who's supplying toilet paper or making it or whatever, and they're making a killing. So you look at, you know, Zim or Africa. And actually, as I was moving home, I read a book called Africa is Rising. Mm. Right. And that book made me see Africa for what she is. And in many ways, she's disorganized, but there's money to be made when you organize things. You know, I read another report, $22 million per day is made in Baden Musica between 4 a.m. and 10. But you don't see, you don't see it. You know, if you went there and we all parked the car and we just, you couldn't, you wouldn't be able to see it, but there's so much transaction. Yes. You know, so it's, it's it, you can't compare Edinburgh Mm. To to them, mm. it's you know it's a totally different you know um, you know landscape, and so when you're here, you you know you have to be here, you know body mind fully spirit, fully mm. right. Otherwise, it's not going to work for you. Yeah, you know. And then you look at also the responsibilities. You know, I've, I've got, how many staff do I have? They are waiting. Today's last day of the month. Payroll, right. Um, the responsibility that, that you know, that come, comes with leadership. Um, you know, those are some of the challenges, you know, the hustle and bustle, you get to the, you know, first of the month or whatever, and you're, ah, mm. you know. Um, because it's tough in this economy. It, it, it massively. Mm. It is massively tough, you know. 
Um, but you're you're comfortable. You're okay. You made the right decision. You're supposed to be where you're supposed to be. You know, I I look at where the world. You know, look, my sister lives in the UAE, right? Um, you look at what the nice things that she has in the UAE. Do I want those nice things? Yes, I do. You know, uh, but you can also make a plan. You know, how many people I know live here in Harare, go to Joburg every month to escape the madness, as they say. You know, um, you know, there's 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 a certain quality of life you have here that you don't have anywhere else. Mm. Your kids are relatively safer here. Mm. You know, uh, if you're living in Joburg, for example, if your family go to the mall. Are you 100% sure they're going to come back? Mm. You know, um, how many times do I speak to a relative or a family member in South Africa? Oh, I was, I was uh, hijacked today. And they speak about it calmly. Mm. Calmly. Mm. Um, you know, so I, I look at some of those things. Um, you know, can I tr- sort of see what the government is trying to do? I can sort of see what they're trying to do. Are they implementing it the way that serves all of us? Uh, you know? <laughs> So the that's that's big, you know. I'm laughing because we could spend the whole day talking yeah. about that. Yeah. The the I want to I want to draw you to uh, two six three chat. Yeah. You then decide you're going to start it um, yeah. first as a t- Twitter handle. Yeah. Talk to us about that journey. And the fascinating thing mm-hmm. is that I discovered as I was reading around that you stayed with this idea for nine months. I did because you were scared. Yes. Um, Talk to us about the journey, that journey, sitting around with this idea. You're terribly frightened about about launching it, but finally you launch it. Mm. Talk to us, just that thought process, that experience, that loneliness of creating something like 263 Chat. You know, I look at, it It was a lonely journey. Um, you know, I always speak about we, but at the time it was just me, mm. you know, uh, and we didn't have this fiber internet that we have now and all this sort of stuff. Um, I was scared of, ah, you know, if you raise your voice, you know, the CIO are going to come, come find, for you, come for you and they're going to find you and they're going to kill you. Mm-hmm. You know, I was scared because I didn't know, like, is it really true? Uh, but you wanted to do this. I, I wanted, you, see, I looked at it like this. At a family level, right, and I like to use examples that are close to home like that. They, they may be like a drunken uncle, an alcoholic uncle that's there, but we don't... We, we almost, at a family function, just keep him in the corner. Mm. I just keep him liquid, but just keep him. Yeah, yeah. Right? No one ever really, we hardly ever like, you know, uncle, you're an alcoholic. What happened? And if you actually ask him, you know, it might be like, actually, um, this happened to me when I was 35 and I haven't really recovered. And so uh, drinking is how I resolve my problems. So if we don't resolve issues at a family level, I looked at it and thought at a national level, the many issues that are going on that we are still pretending are not issues. Mm. And I thought, if we're going to look at this country and develop this country, you know, I I think we live in a very beautiful country, uh, lots of resources. We shouldn't be where we are. Mm. You know, it frustrates me that we are where we are. And that's another conversation altogether. Mm. But I looked and thought, hang on, let's at least talk about it. But the other issue was, I just didn't like the way the international media spoke about us. At the time, it was Grace, Bob, and Morgan. Mm. Those are the only Zimbabweans they cared about. And I thought, ah, but there's more of us. There are more people in this room than those three people. So if we started to talk online as a community of Zimbabweans, these BBCs would watch these conversations mm. and see that we actually care about other issues. And so that's what happens now. When the BBC writes a story on Zimbabwe, they don't write about ED and ED's wife and, you know, that sort of thing. They can. Mm-hmm. Right? If they want to. If they want to. But there's other, you know, other opportunities. You know, the other things that are going on is there's a guy in Marundira, uh, blueberries. His, his farm is 100% solar or something like that. I've never met the guy, but I know the story. We are telling our own stories. And this is my point. This is my point. I just looked and thought, hang on. as And I'm, I'm a... I'm a lover of history, mm-hmm. right? One thing uh, I would love to have heard, um, you know, the liberation struggle, right? The way it's told. Mm. I now question everything, mm. you know? Uh, Joyce got kicked out of ZANU-PF. Or Sanaa, she didn't, she didn't kill, that helicopter story, that's not real. 
So it, it, it made me question everything about mm. what I'd learned. Mm. And, you know, let's relearn certain things. So if we're going to relearn certain things, then let's also tell our stories. And let's just own the story. Let's, just, let's own the narrative. Mm. You know? uh, how, how happy are you? Satisfied are you? First of all, about the profession. How are we telling the stories? And secondly, you are, you are, in, you are in so, on social media. Mm. Uh, the toxicity. Yes. Yeah. That, yeah. that to me mm. crushes debate. Yes. There's no debate to talk about. You can't debate anything on, on social media mm. and, have to, to, and hope to make sense. At least, at least that's my position. Mm. What, what's your view? The, yeah. the, the state of media and this toxicity that is on social media. The state of media is also a reflection of the business environment. Mm. Let us not lie. If the business environment is conducive, companies would advertise and, you know, would, you'd get your share, mm. you'd get our share, mm. everyone gets their share. Mm. Right. Um, so there's an issue there. It's an issue of confidence. And there's issues of historical issues that we have not dealt with. Mm -hmm. You can't just wipe people's money, delete it, and then just think everyone's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. No, people are not going to be okay. You know, how many uh, pension funds have, have, you know, how many pension companies, organizations have, uh, you know, thugged our parents' You know, um, um, you know, savings, savings, you know, my parents in the late 60s, they shouldn't really be working. Mm. They shouldn't be. They should be playing with their grandkids. You know, they worked hard, but, you know, they're still working. So the point is, uh, we need a conducive business environment. Number one. Uh, number two, when you have a business, a conducive business environment, it's easier to pay the journalists on time. You know, so. Uh, this goes back to your uh, profession, mm -hmm. prof professional question. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of brown envelope journalism. Um, Dada, I've got a story about you, but pay me X so that I can kill the story. Mm -hmm. That happens. So it's happening. It's happening. Mm -hmm. I've, I've written about it, mm -hmm. um, and it's been interesting, the response that's come through. Mm -hmm. It's clear that uh, there's brown envelope journalism in all newsrooms. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with it in your organization? You know, you've got to, once it, you hear about it, you've got to address it. You know, you can't turn a blind eye. And so journalists get paid to write stories. They get paid to kill stories. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, they, especially the writing stories part. They get paid to write yes. stories. Yes. But it's also about your editorial stance, you know. Mm -hmm. Hang on, this is... This is, is this a story? This is a story. This looks like this sounds like an advert. You know, so it comes back to. But if the edit has been paid, that question is not going to be asked. Well, the, the owner's got to ask. Yeah. Someone's got to ask. Yeah. Someone's got to ask the question. You know, um, I'm like you. Um, I don't interfere with editorial content. You know, people. I've got friends of mine. Say, oh no! Hey, look, I've got a solar company. Come in, write a story about. No, no, no. Advertise. Yeah, I, I would say no. If 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 it's worth the story, here's the here's the, the journalist. Uh, here's, here's the journalist or the here's the editor's phone number. Cool. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if it's worth the story, if he thinks it's worth the story, then he'll do. Do you do you get the sense that people believe it when you say you're not you don't get involved in the internal matters? Uh, it's a difficult one. I I, I don't I don't think they 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 understand. Mm -hmm. You know, when the story is when they when the editor clicks publish, I'm also seeking for the first time. <laughs> You know, I'm almost like, ah, who, <laughs> what? You know, I'm also shocked and... And that's how it should be. Yeah, you know, yeah. And I think the thing that people don't understand is when we speak about independent journalism, it also has to be independent from the, yeah. from the, from the owner. Otherwise, it's a, it, it's a, it can be a marketing tool for me and my friends. Yeah. You know, oh, my buddy, he works at this place. This is a very important conversation mm. for, you know... I think everybody out mm, there, mm. It's, you know, throughout the, throughout the continent mm. and, and stuff, that it, it's very important that mm. I not be involved in making editorial decisions. Because if I do that, mm, mm. what's the point of having the journalists? This is because the, it shouldn't the editorial independence start with the journalists. Yeah. The journalists must be at liberty to decide what story to write yes. for as long as it is ethical and professional. Is, is that your sense? That's how it is. In fact, yeah. where my office is, is uh, I've moved away from the journalists um, um, so that I'm not in and amongst their, their space. Yeah. 
where they're discussing the story, the angle, yeah. other journalists are chipping in. I'm not there to hear, you know. Sometimes I'm not even at that office, mm. you know. Um, you know, you know. So it's important to, you know, look. If you remain professional, you'll attract advertising dollars. You know, advertisers are not stupid. They can see that this this is not. I mean, we don't want to name names, but there's certain publications that are that are you know tabloid that are uh, created for under the guise of independent media, but they're actually supported by this political party mm, or this type mm, of business. Mm. Um, you can see that. And advertisers can see that or, you know, as well. So if you want to see the kind of journalism you do as a discerning consumer of news, look at the kinds of adverts. Mm. You know, Listed companies don't advertise with you if they think that your journalism is rubbish. Mm. There's an audit committee somewhere looking mm. at why are we putting this advert with these guys? But but I want to push back on that. Mm. Do these companies understand the importance of a free press and free journalism? Or some of them, because I've discovered a listed company actually, mm. you know, playing ball mm. game with this uh, brown envelope journalism. Do they all get it? No, they don't. They don't. They don't. No, no, they don't all get it. You know, and it depends on, uh, you, know, so, you know, one listed company, one of the marketing people is also an ex-journalist so he gets it yeah you know um as storytellers we we have the power to shift the you know mindset and say ah yeah. oh, okay you know if we look at covid right um there were so many conspiracies around don't take this vaccine Vaccines. what 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 but those vaccines saved lives mm. Mm. You know, were it not for those vaccines, we wouldn't be sitting. No, here. no, no. This, this would be via Zoom. Absolutely. You know, I would have. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're terrible. Yeah. I, I did that and I didn't. I didn't enjoy it. Yeah, didn't enjoy it. Um, Nigel, yeah. unpack to us yeah. what two six three chat is right now. So we we start off as a as a Twitter account. Yeah. And uh, we were naive. I say we. I was naive. I thought if we if we spoke about these things, you know. Um, mainstream media would come and pick up on these conversations and then they would produce the content. Mm. So at some point in 2014, we started publishing our own news. So we're an online publisher, also co try also trying to cre uh, compete with you guys, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know. Um, so we've yes, we publish our stuff on, on the on the website, yeah. a lot of social media activity, mm. uh, podcasts, uh, Twitter spaces, uh, e-paper, um, yeah, so it's, an, it's, a, it's a publication mm. um, that, um, you know, is also trying to, you know. Um, and you employ 18 people now? Something like that, yeah. 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 And you found ways of uh, monetizing this content. Talk to me about that because that's a big challenge, isn't it? So it's, it's, it's you know, so it's a couple of things, you know. Yeah. We, uh, we do we offer training, okay. you know, um, as a revenue. Uh, so, yeah, different revenue models. models. So, li so literally, the accounting background. So dad wasn't, mom and dad weren't, weren't wrong, actually. So thanks to them. Because yeah. um, I'm a journalist who thinks about b the business side of things. Because you have to. If you don't, then it's a hobby. Yeah. Right? So how do we pay the lights? Mm -hmm. You know, how do we pay for rent and so forth? So I had to, I literally reverse engineered um what you were doing actually, my brother. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, so how's my, my brother Trevor here? Uh, how does he do it? You know, he's got publications, he's got Newsday, this and this, this and that. How are they doing it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And 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 I looked at your budget and your thing, and I thought, I, I don't have that. Right. Um, so how do we do it on a smaller scale? So everything had to be online, right? There was a time when I actually wanted to print and give away, like, you know how how did I use yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to do that. So e-paper came about. We've been doing it since 2017. How is that going? Uh, 57,500 subscribers. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So we send that thing out every day, Monday to Friday. It's free. Um, you know, I didn't want this issue of you got to pay for the device, you got to pay for the data, mm. then you got to pay for the mm. actual mm. the news. No. Mm. Pay for the device and the data, that's mm. fine. But to mm. get the re to receive the news, no, you see and that. I see you. You now have advertisers both on social media, on your on your Twitter yeah. handles and, and and stuff. So yeah. the money's coming in. We're invoicing. 
coming in is another issue. <laughs> this is Zimbabwe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, in- invoicing is uh, is 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 not uh, hard. Yeah, yeah. It's collection. Collection. Yeah, it's a big part of the job, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, so you 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 were passionate about starting a progressive national dialogue. Yes. How comfortable are you? Happy with you? We, we, I mean, what's your what's your happiness uh, grade when it comes to? Do we have a progressive conversation? Like you said earlier in the question around toxicity. Yeah. You know, um, you you talk to write a, write a story, right? So Nige um, can tweet, oh, you know, my refuse collection. Uh, my rubbish wasn't collected this week. You know, what's the city council doing about that? Okay. And I'm saying this is me on my own personal mm-hmm, social media. Mm-hmm. Someone can take that and say, that's 260 Chats view. Mm. All of a sudden, ah, they don't like, 260 doesn't like triple C. <laughs> you see where the conversation started. <laughs> All I'm saying is, no, my rubbish wasn't collected over here. They expect me to pay the rates, but my rubbish wasn't collected. Mm. You know, so... But we are, we've become so toxic that the, what I've said can end up being, I don't like triple C. Mm. That's not what I said. And then the next thing will be boycott 263 chat. Boycott 263 chat. So we are not listening to each other. No. Yeah, we're not. You know? And you know, the thing is, the sad thing about it is we gone to a point where we say things to each other that we'd never say to each other face to face. You see, so on 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 on, on gadgets, on gadgets, we can say, oh, you know, to hell with that guy. Would never say that to that mm. person. I don't think. No, we don't. We wouldn't. I've, I've met people that uh, abuse me on on yes. social media. Um, you, I'm sure you get uh, it. And I meet them face to face, and mm. they're completely different yes, people. Exactly. I'm going. I was doing this and that. I'm like, really? Mm. Um, mm. So you were recognized in 2018 at the Highway Africa uh, gathering in. Uh, Roads, eh? That's a, yeah. a road. Yeah, and, and you say that that changed your game plan. Talk to me about what that recognition did to your business. Um, you know, we're taking as a. It's almost. It's crazy. You, you almost need external validation, right, for people here to go. Ah, no, those guys are serious. That's serious. Yes. So it it the doors that we were knocking on, mm. and we were being the shutting the doors on us. All of a sudden, those doors are now open. Mm. You know, uh, oh yeah, you're the award-winning guys. I, I, I like to I like to avoid using that phrase, but it 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 uh, it, it opened the doors for us to, um, it, in the region. Mm-hmm. You know, all of a sudden I started getting invited to, um, you know, to speak at various events. You know, um, across the world to speak about how we are a innovative startup. Yeah, startup. Um, how are we doing it without funding, um, that kind of thing. And, you know, yeah. So it, there's been a lot of those type of conversations. The conferences where I speak at now are really around how to fund the media, mm. you know, and mm. I always use examples of what we do to say, look, we're doing this. We've thought about this, um, you know. And it can be done. It can be done. It can be done. Yeah. 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 Now we're going to take another break. Uh, Please don't go away. Join us for the last segment of my conversation with Sir Nige, Nigel Mgam. Sir Nige um, can tweet, oh, you know, my refuse collection, uh, my rubbish wasn't collected this week. You know, what's the city council doing about that? Okay. And I'm saying this is me on my own personal Mm -hmm, social media. mm -hmm. Someone can take that and say that's 260 Chats view. Mm. All of a sudden, ah, they don't like 260 doesn't like Triple C. Imagine getting free access to the Newsday, the Standard, the Zimbabwe Independent, and the Weekly Digest for a full month. Well, you can, and all you need to do is download the Newsday e-reader app on Google Play Store or scan the Newsday QR code in any of the AMH print publications and start enjoying the quality content. e-paper.
Welcome back to my conversation with Sir Nige, uh, Nigel Mugama. So, Nigel, you, you, I want your views on our tech ecosystem at the present moment mm. and to ask you, what is it that would help 263 Chat, chat grow or what are the hurdles towards the growth of uh, 263 Chat um, and, and given our tech space? You know, the cost of data, mm. the cost of data. Um, you know, if I'm sitting in government um, and I've got Tel One, um, I've got Zesa, mm. I've got um, the post office, you know, you can create, um, and the post office is everywhere you know, across the country, Rusape, wherever, wherever it is, right? You'd want to create um, some sort of hub where people can connect at least for an hour a day or something just to give them time to download whatever it is they download and tech, technology you can that's that's easy to do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um i think that can help farmers and other sectors you know um we we see it with 263 chat we have we have a large whatsapp community actually um and you know that's actually where the magic actually happens so we've got um, a, just to give an example, a farmers, a farming group that's under 263 chat, and we don't charge money to come in the group. No, that's not actually not the mm. point. The point is it's 263 chat agriculture farming group, and farmers across the country are sharing best practice. Hey guys, my chicken died. Here's a photo. What medicine should I use? Mm, mm, mm. You know? So what we want is to encourage more things like that. I think that helps development in the country, but it also helps um, you know, our brand, you know, um, so there's a free idea. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, I think things like that can, can, can definitely help the ecosystem. Mm. Um, a lot of these things come back to a better economy, right? Ultimately, you know, um, but the cost of data mm. is, 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 you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard for people to, to connect. You may have the device. Yeah. Saving to buy the device is one thing. The, the data the da to keep it running. Yeah. And all you have to do, actually, if you look at a family group and if you see Auntie So-and-so who's normally active and she's no longer active, someone should be asking, does she have data? Mm. Yeah. So that that's an issue. Mm. That's an mm. issue. Yeah. Mm. It, it, interestingly, you are now branching out, as it were, mm. and you're talking of, uh, you know, launching a fast food uh, startup. Why are you going there? Well, first I've got the space, um, so we're already paying for the rent, um, but it's also about paying bills. Um, it's, uh, you know, you know, just looking at, look, I, I've, since I started working in, mm. in July 2000, I've always carried a lunchbox. And the reason I do that is because I know what's in it. Mm -hmm. right? I'm probably, I cooked it or I was involved in the preparation in some form. I know what, but a lot of people buy their lunch. Um, so when you f what you find is there are a lot of sudden spots that have opened up, right? And my thing is, it's not all uniform, you know? So, you know, if you go to, um, you know, these large fast food places, you don't want to, you know, if you go to the Wani Blayo, the quality is the same as the mm. one in mm. We're not doing that for our traditional mm. food, mm. you know? Um, so this is going to be a traditional food outlet? Basically. Yeah. Basically, okay. you know, um, the other side of it is I'm, I'm looking at my family in the village and saying, oh, no, no, uncle so-and-so, you can grow this for me. Mm -hmm. You know, mzukuru so-and-so, you can grow this for mm -hmm. me. Chickens, yes. uh, road runners, e exactly. all that, and, and uh, traditional food. E exactly, wow. exactly. That's do, interesting. Yeah, that's the whole idea. Mm. Yeah. Mm. When, when do you launch? Uh, and well, do we have a name? It's called Kwatinashe. Kwatinashe. Yeah, yeah. Kwatinashe. Why Tinashe? Tinashe is my other name. Ha. Ah, we wish you all the best no, with thank that. You very, thank do you, you do you cook? I try to. I don't have I'm time poor. Yeah. I'm time poor. <laughs> I'm busy. Um but I I do uh I'll, I'll make breakfast on yeah. the weekend for the kids, mm. um, you know, the family. Um but I do enjoy cooking. And in fact creating is, you know, it's it's therapy. Interesting. Yeah. It is. It yeah. is. Yeah. Tell me, what jobs have you done in your life which are not in your CV? Um, you know, I one. I'll tell you why. Mm. For me, I find 
the jobs that are not in my CV are, I, I, at one time I worked as a gardener. Really? Yes, I okay. worked as a gardener and that was, that was very helpful, okay. uh, humbling. Mm. Um, and I also worked as a teacher. Okay. I taught as a teacher for, for three years, okay. uh, for three months rather, three months, three months. Mm. So that's not in my CV. And mm. we've, we have a lot of these things that we've done, yeah. which are not in our CV, which means that uh, life is not uh, a straight line. No, what, not. what jobs are not in a, what jobs have you done which you're not proud to put in your CV? Uh, not that I was, wasn't proud. <laughs> <laughs> not that I wasn't proud, yeah. but, uh, you know, I just didn't see the value. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, in Edinburgh, you know, you're trying to pay for your MBA. You're trying to do all that. Uh, I worked in a, you know, call center. Um, you know, that taught me how to talk to people. I mean, you're literally calling, cold calling people, mm. right? And trying to convince them. Uh, so I worked in this call center that did uh, polls. You know, um, and so you're trying to get them to give you their opinion on whatever is going on, you know, usually related to the government. Mm -hmm. And so you, you don't sound like a local, right? Um, you, uh, you're calling them at 7 p.m. Mm. and trying to win them over. And of course, you know, obviously you're being paid per the hour, but someone's monitoring to see how many calls you've made, how many, you know, so navigating that yeah. was 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 difficult. Uh, I did like an accounts payable role as well in Edinburgh as well. Um, I did that, you know. Uh, but it, it taught me a lot about how to talk to, to to different kinds of people. Yeah, yeah. And the thing about it is, um, you know, whether we're purple or green or whatever, you know, I think generally we want um, to be respected you know, and to be acknowledged. Mm. Um, so uh, I, I, I- That's hugely important, it, isn't massively, it? Massively, massively. We all want to be respected. Yeah. We all want to be acknowledged. Yes. You know, if you look at your own family, uh, you know, we, we go we gather around and maybe the older sibling is not the one who's done well in life, but that's the older sibling. And we tend must to- Must be given their space. Yeah, they must be given their space. And yet we, you know, we look for the guy with the money. Mm. You know, um, and I remember, you know, um, Ja Prez is speaking about, he, I think he's got an older brother and saying, no, I've got an older brother. So when you go home, he's the older brother. Mm. I'm Ja Prez. Mm. But actually when I'm at home, you know, it, yeah, things change, <laughs> you know. Tell me, Nigel, I mean, you're, 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 you're 40. 45. You're 45. Mm. Is, is there a failure that's humbled you right now in life? Oof, wow. So I've failed many times. Failed many times. I failed many, many times. Um, what has failure done to you? You know, you you go to a quiet place and you reflect on um, why did I think it was going to work? <laughs> you know, Stupid me. Yeah, stupid me, right? Um, but then I, I quickly look for the lessons. Like, okay, so, okay, what have we done there? Um, we, within 26 each other, was a, 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 a product called InstaVoice mm. that came, it was, it came through one of the mobile operators and it was 2015, 2015, 16. Mm. And we thought we were going to make money. I was like this. InstaVoice. Uh, InstaVoice, yeah. I, basically, um, an artist, um, is the creator of the content as an example and um, they sing or record this audio and then people subscribe and pay a month, um, like a, a monthly fee to hear, you know, whatever. So for us as a news organization, we, we're you know, gonna do the news in the morning, afternoon, and literally try to mimic what's yeah. happening on radio. Mm. And we thought we'd made it. And it went boom. Oh, it went, it, it, it was crashed. It, it crashed, you know, um, but we learned, you know, I, I'm, I'm someone who, um, I don't, you can't take failure and then give up. Mm. You know, I think I'm also someone who is very focused. I know mm. exactly where I'm going. Mm. You know, um, I know why I'm doing it. Mm. Uh, I'm actually reading a book right now called Find Your Why, right? Simon Sinek. Yeah. And, you know, it's important. You know, why is my favorite question? But so why are we doing it this way? Mm. Even family functions, I'm like, but why have we done it this way? Mm. 
And I'm always the guy, everyone's going this way, I'm the one going the other side. But it's, it's because someone needs to ask, is this the right thing we should be doing? You know, I'm not trying to be, um, yeah, I'm not trying to cause any problem. I'm just trying to uh, <laughs> ensure that in, we- In our country, yeah, yeah. the moment you ask, why are we doing things like mm -hmm. that? It mm -hmm. means you're not supporting Zanapia for CCC. <laughs> You've got to agree with everybody and- uh, no, But, but that's, that's, see, the journalist in me, you that's not how it works. Exactly. That's not how it works. You know, see, when we were growing up, um, and this is something that I, I, I should have mentioned, we all sat at the dinner table. Right? It was very important for, for, for mom and dad for us to sit at the table because that was a chance to say, how was your day? Mm. And so we learned a lot of lessons at the dinner table. So we learned how to debate. That's where I learned the phrase, let's agree to disagree. Around the dinner table. Around the dinner table. So, you know, one of the things that I, I try to do with the kids, talk to them, mm. you know, I understand where they're at. Mm. Um, you know, same thing with, with, with Gabby, you know, um, how are you doing? How did we go in the spelling? Mm. Which word are you struggling with? Mm. Do you know the meaning of the word? Mm. You know, uh, let's go into YouTube and, and, and watch a video on this word. You know, she's in grade four now, and one of the words she had in a spelling test was ecosystem. Mm. I know adults who can't spell <laughs> ecosystem, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, debate is, is, is very important. Dialogue is very important. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Naj, what an amazing conversation. You, you, um, people might not realize this. You also might not realize this, but I think you are one guy who popularized 263. And then I saw a lot of copycats coming out and uh, there's a number of people mm -hmm. who are calling themselves 263 that, but you started this thing, <laughs> Nigel. You started this thing. Nigel, I'm not going to let you go before we talk uh, books. You brought a couple of books yes. here. And I'm asking you to recommend three books yeah. um, that you you suggesting that, that have made an impact on you, um, and you'd uh, you know suggest that uh, our the viewers out there read. Um, so obviously, this book made a, a big yeah, yeah the, the, the Martin Luther the, King Martin one. Luther. Okay, there's a book here. If you're in a family business, mm. this is a very good book to read. Family Wars. Family Wars. It's you know by Grant Gordon and Nigel Nichols. Yes. Mm. Yeah. This book helped me understand that some of the brands that we love are actually family businesses. You know, Adidas uh, and, and Puma, brothers. Started by... Uh, yeah, brothers, right? Um, how to navigate that space. You know, um, I've got a young dad who, you know... Uh, in, in, yeah, I've got a young dad and, you know, you're joining a family business, you're starting your own little business. There's going to be tension, you know. How do you manage that? How do you manage that? Um, how do you hand over, mm. you know, uh, succession, mm. you know, stuff like that. Um, some of the books have completely changed my life, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Mm. I'm rereading that book now. Mm. I've read it three times. Yes. Yeah, that book, you know, and you learn something yeah, new every single absolutely. time, you know. Um, who moved my cheese? There's value in reading books more than once because you miss quite a lot. You see, I don't lend books to people. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Because I highlight no, mine. Uh, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> I make notes. Um, I'm reading a book that my sister bought, um, you know. Uh, Sorry, I disturbed, yeah. disturbed you. Yeah. Who moved my cheese? Who moved my cheese? Yeah. Uh, it's a book on, called Manifest. Mm. So, you know, it speaks about how you've got to visualize the victory. You got to visualize, you know, your wedding day. How do you want it to, to pan out? Yeah. You got to visualize the day and and then work towards that. Work yeah. backwards. Yeah. You know, um, books like Rich Dad Poor, Poor, Poor Dad. Dad changed my view on money. Mm. You know, like what is money? Yeah. You know, uh, what is time? Mm. What should I be spending my time on? Um, there's a book that I read, uh, Brene Brown, uh, Daring Radio. Yeah. You know, I've uh, watched her TED talk yes, and I yeah, thought it yes, was, yeah, it was yeah. amazing. Yes, yeah. yeah. Nigel, thank you so much, my brother. You, uh, you've been a pioneer within the uh, social media space, mm -hmm. turning a, uh, a Twitter hash, a, a, a Twitter handle, and a hashtag into into a business, into mm -hmm. a publishing business. Uh, an accountant who 
discovered he had a journalist in them mm. and you followed your passion. Uh, young men doing so well in the diaspora decided to come back home. Mm. So many lessons from your, from, from your life. Thank you, Nigel, for taking the time to come and share those lessons with us. Thank you so much. We wish you the best with the restaurant. I'll yeah. come and eat uh, Sadzanema Guru, yeah. uh, if that is available. Yeah, it is. Mount Pleasant, eh? Yeah, Mount Pleasant. Wonderful. Yeah. Wish you the best. No, Nigel. thank you very much for that. Good. Allow thank me you. to turn to our viewers who are all over the world who watch this show every Monday. We are out 7 a.m. Central African time. To ensure that you don't miss out uh, on any of these quality conversations, such as the one I've had with Senaijie, <laughs> please remember to press subscribe. We've also gone further and created podcasts for your listening pleasure. They sit on our website. Um, please go there uh, and, and, and click on the, uh, on the link for your listening pleasure. We view, uh, read all your comments. Uh, and we take seriously your suggestions as to who should uh, be sitting on the chair across me there. Thank you so much. Until next time, cheers to you all.